Arrive early enough on game day in Washington, and you might see this. This is no ordinary septuagenarian riding a Segway through a concourse. He is Christian Adolf Jurgensen III, also known as Sonny. There's been a lot of people who can throw the football, and there's probably some who could probably throw it further. But I haven't seen anyone who could handle a football in the manner that the redhead could. And I've often said he could hit a net at 50 if he wanted to. Throw him the football and put it where he want to put it and when he want to put it, I'd put him up against anybody. I don't ever remember Sonny throwing behind me or throwing down to where I had to pick the ball up below my knees to catch it. No matter what pattern you were running, if you were going to break free, that ball was always there. He was a magician with that ball. I, he, he could make a ball look like it was going to go at a linebacker and then all of a sudden go right into the hole at the receiver. When you watched him play, you really felt like you were watching an artist as much as you were watching a quarterback. He always threw a perfect spiral. It, it was like a feather coming out of the sky. You never saw anybody drop one of Sonny's passes because it would have been next to impossible. That was true genius at work there. Unitas told me a funny story about you. He had a restaurant. It was called the Golden, Golden Arm. Golden Arm. And, and he invited you to the restaurant and you walked Opening in. Opening night. And he was sitting in with a whole group of, of reporters in this booth. He said, thank you for coming. And I said, thank you for naming your restaurant after me. <laughs> We're right here today talking to Sonny Jorgensen. About like Johnny Unitas, Sonny is in the Hall of Fame. But today, Jorgensen isn't celebrated like Unitas and other contemporaries like Joe Namath and Bart Starr. And you can probably guess why. In 18 seasons, he never led a team to a championship. But he is one of the game's unique figures. And in his seventh decade of NFL football, the longtime Redskins radio broadcaster is still talking about his favorite subject. I think Philip Rivers doesn't have flaws in his delivery, but he gets it there. You throw a football like you do a rock at a street light. It's got to be natural. If you're trying to manufacture a throw, it isn't going to work. People didn't like my motion. I said, oh, what are you going to do with this motion? He winds up. He takes long. I said, well, let me ask you this. If the ball gets there before the defender gets there, who cares? I threw sidearm behind my back. I was two for three left-handed. To look at him on the football field, he didn't look like everybody else. He didn't walk or carry himself like anybody else. He had a gut, usually, and that caused his shirt tail to kind of come out more than most guys. And he would walk up to the line of scrimmage, and everybody would be in their stance. And he would put his hands on his hips, and he would just kind of look around. I mean, he looked more like a guy that was walking up to a bar, getting ready to order a draft as opposed to a guy that was getting ready to take a snap and run a play in the National Football League. Everybody's got a thing about, uh, your weight, and I said, you don't throw the ball with your stomach, you throw it with your arm. In 1957, Sonny was just a skinny fourth-round pick from Duke University. He spent three years in Philadelphia backing up the legendary Norm Van Brocklin until Van Brocklin retired after leading the Eagles to the 1960 NFL Championship. Jurgensen has the unenviable task of filling the great Norm Van Brocklin shoe. The college all-star game is played. The first game that the Eagles are going to play as world champions with Sonny Jurgensen at quarterback. He's under center and throws a pass behind his back to Pete Ratzlaff. Jorgensen of the Eagles back. Almost trapped here. And he throws one behind us. Pete Ratzlaff got that ball, goes to the 34. My reaction, I'm sure, was the reaction of every other Philadelphia fan. was, oh, my God. This is what we've got now. We go from Norm Van Brocklin to Meadowlark Lemon. In his first season as a starting quarterback, 
Jurgensen set an NFL record with over 3,700 yards passing, and his 32 touchdown passes still stands as an Eagles record. But the Eagles fell short of a repeat in 61 and won just five games over the next two seasons. The city took it out on Sonny. We're playing the Cowboys. 55,000 people booed when I came on the field. Sonny just seemed cavalier in his approach to the game. And I think the Philadelphia fans weren't ready for cavalier. There was a, a thing in Philadelphia when you were traded. Sonny Jurgensen's been traded and all the bartenders in Philadelphia. Wearing black armbands. Yeah. Right. Now, was that an exaggeration about your uh, nightlife? and your? Because, you know, some of these stories take on a life of their own. I have. <laughs> I was a night person. We were playing Detroit up there. We had to have it to win the Eastern Division in 61. And I'm coming in, and I get caught. The night before the game? night before the game. So you broke curfew? Yeah. And I said, this isn't going to be good. I'm going to get crucified. I get 27, 35, 430 some yards. We beat him in the last seconds. To me, it motivated me. The fact that you were caught? The fact that I went out. I couldn't let my teammates down. I mean, could you see where the coach would be upset if the star player is coming in at 2 in the morning and is uh, hung over? Without question. So why, could, why did you I do could, it then? I could, you know, evaluate me on how, how I play in the game. You know, that's what you should be concerned about, how I play in the game. By 1964, the Eagles had seen enough. They traded him to Washington for quarterback Norm Snead. In his 18-year career, Sonny Jurgensen played for nine different head coaches. Among them was Hall of Fame quarterback Otto Graham. Don't jump. You were quoted as saying, there's only one difference between Otto and me. He likes candy bars and milkshakes. <laughs> right. I like yeah. women and scotch. Right. Well, it probably wasn't a good thing to say to your head coach. Otto and I became very close after he... He left it. Otto wasn't an NFL head coach. Sonny went through a very troubling time as a quarterback because he never really had a coach. He basically was coaching himself with the exception of Van Brockle in those few years early. So he was always his own coach. His first five teams in Washington were all losers. But his offense, built around converted running backs Bobby Mitchell and Charlie Taylor, was as good as any in football. It was, in a lot of ways, I think, just kind of ahead of its time, because you had these two wide receivers that both had great speed, and yet were, by nature and by instinct, running backs. And you had this quarterback who could throw the ball with more accuracy than any quarterback in the National Football League, hitting these guys downfield. I mean, these were like handoffs to running backs, but they were 40 yards downfield before you handed it off. In 1967, Jurgensen broke his own NFL record for passing yards, and Taylor, Mitchell, and tight end Jerry Smith became the only trio in history to finish in the top four in receiving. And the Redskins still didn't win. So in 69, they took drastic action, coaxing Vince Lombardi out of retirement. In my first meeting with him, I walk in, sit across the desk from him, and he says, you know, young man, I've heard many things about you, some good and some bad. The only thing I ask of you is to be yourself. Don't try to emulate anybody and be something that you're not. Don't try to be Bart Starr. You be Sonny Jurgensen. He says, any questions? I said, no, sir. That was it. I had a coach. Finally had a coach. Did you change your social life at all when he came? I mean, all of a sudden. Oh, yes. Yeah, I did. Took him with me. <laughs> no, 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 but uh, no, yeah, yeah, I, I did. I was in the best shape I've been in. I mean, you had to be. He was the best at what he did. He made the game easy. He made the game fun. And that's something I really cherish is having that opportunity to play for him, somebody that knew what it was all about. And it was just one year or two. After leading the Redskins to their first winning season in 15 years, 
Lombardi died of cancer. Two years later, the Redskins brought another winner to town, defensive mastermind George Allen. We had instant problems, and I couldn't win. The, the power struggle. Let's have three cheers for the Redskins. Hip, hip. What did you think the first time you did the three cheers for the Redskins in the I, locker room? I almost threw up. I laughed and just left the room. <laughs> Intellectually, George Allen didn't have a chance against Sonny Jurgensen. He didn't understand him. I'd rather see a pound it in, Sonny. Because George Allen believed that you won with defense. And Sonny acknowledged that. The defense won championships. But he also pointed out occasionally you needed to score a touchdown. And George just couldn't deal with that. In this part, Sonny, we're just setting up a field goal now. See what we're doing. We, all, we don't need a field goal to win here. So. so. When Jurgensen injured his shoulder in the 1971 preseason, Allen turned to a quarterback more to his liking, veteran Billy Kilmer. All I tried to do in 71 is don't throw interceptions, don't fumble the ball, and, you know, and just do your job and get out of the way. Sonny regained his health, but not his job. We're playing the Giants. Billy got his bell rung on the opening drive. And George came over to me. It was third down on about the 20-yard line. And he said, to go in, run a draw play, and we'll kick a field goal. So I go in the huddle, and uh, I said, the hell with him. I'm going to throw it. And I threw a touchdown pass. And I come to the sidelines. He wasn't happy. He said, I thought I told you to call a draw play. And I said, I called a draw play. I said, but when I went to the line of scrimmage, they were hollering, look out for the draw. Look out for I said, it's audible to the pass. <laughs> so the next thing I knew, I'm back in the game. <laughs> Billy said, good play. And I said, get me down there again. I'll get you another one. He said, oh, you son of a <laughs> In 72, the aging Jurgensen tore his Achilles and could only watch as Billy Kilmer led the Redskins to Super Bowl VII. But when his teammates took the field to face the undefeated Miami Dolphins, Allen made sure Jurgensen was watching from afar. He didn't want me to be a part of it. I Were was you? sitting up in a box for 12 people alone. Wouldn't let me talk to the coaches so I could help Billy. It was, it was sad. I was down on the field before the game. I'll never forget Don Shula walked out and he said, I know how hard you work to be in this game. And he said, it would be a better game if you win it. I'm so sorry for you. Shula's Dolphins completed the undefeated season. Two years later, Sonny played his final season. In 74, you played the Dolphins. People say that's your last great performance. <laughs> George came he said, you know, a lot of coaches wouldn't do this starting a 40-year-old quarterback against the world champions. And a smart aleck re retort for me was, if you want to win, you better. <laughs> <laughs> the Redhead threw two fourth-quarter touchdown passes and led the Redskins to a last-minute victory over the two-time defending champions. I think there are players in football history that truly were great but because they never won a championship or were never maybe in the right place at the right time, kind of fall through the cracks. Among quarterbacks, I, I thought the Jurgensen was that guy. It was a beautiful thing on a Sunday afternoon to just go out there and watch this guy throw a football. And there were people that would say, why Sonny Jurgensen in the Hall of Fame? What did he ever win? And what I would say is, did you ever see him play? I mean, did you ever really see him play? He didn't always come out ahead on the scoreboard, but there wasn't one time that I walked out of the stadium that I didn't know that I had watched a great player. And that's the kind of guy that deserves to be remembered.